Check one, two, check, check, check. Hi. There we hey, go. Gary. Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going all right. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, thanks for doing this. Uh, yeah. Hey, is it better, Gary, if I do it like this or like or like this? Yeah, better like that, I guess. Yeah. Like that? Okay. Yeah. More, more more cinematic. <laughs> well, it uh, it's supposed to get uh, cut eventually to YouTube. Oh, cool. But uh, okay. <laughs> we've done four uh, episodes now, or five? No. <clears throat> seven or eight i've only produced maybe four of those i think i sent you one of them yeah yeah I, I um the link didn't work but i got the the downloaded clip and then i got on and i was able to find um your show i guess you were you did an interview i think the last one of the last ones was with uh um actress let's see by the name of Cassidy. yeah you did longmire yeah, yeah, she looked familiar. That's great. Uh, yeah, well, we do. There, we have a guest each week, um, but you're my guest on my my little spot, which I'm doing about Better Call Saul. So that's really what the interview is. Uh, um, I think for this intro, maybe I'll I'll, I'll be able to play a clip of it. Uh, uh, during the actual show while well, we have this uh, news and uh, kind of local film news. I guess you heard the show. So anyway, yeah. it's all too confusing for me to explain to you, but uh, yeah, no, no problem. How are you doing? How are you holding up? Uh, you know, I, I got my uh, Johnson and Johnson shot from the hospital here just oh, a couple nice. weeks ago. Oh, wow. Cool. So almost. I just got mine Saturday too. Yeah, would you get the Johnson and Johnson? Uh, the uh, Moderna. Oh, you got to do it twice then, right? Yeah, we had to do it twice. Yeah. Second time knocked us off our feet, but. Yeah. Um, I I guess I only got forty minutes on this thing, so I guess uh, we should get to work. Uh, okay. Let me uh, get myself together here. Okay. Um. um yeah, we should start off, uh, you know, the, the, the way that uh, Jeremiah and, and I actually met was through, uh, was through the uh, nonprofit uh, uh, that Kenny uh, used to operate and along with the family and uh, those works. And uh, uh, we're sad to announce that we lost our uh, good friend, uh, Ken Hill, uh, this past January. Um, yeah, maybe we like to start off, Jeremiah, with a, you want to say a few words about Ken before we? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for having me on uh, on your show. And um, uh, yeah, we've met through the Dreamcatcher Gala and Foundation and um, uh, up your way, up in Canada, and uh, our good uh, friend, uh, Kenny Hill, and um, all of our friends up there, they were just very sweet and uh I, I they're my first experience in really getting to know first nation people uh up in that up in that that area mohawk uh six nation so it's uh it, it's really awesome to be kind of uh, in their culture and getting to know a guy like kenny he's just probably one of the the best sweetest heart guys that you could you could get and um there was actually uh a few people that said a few nice words and i just yeah, I thought it'd be good if maybe we, you know, since we kind of know each other through through Kenny and uh, through the folks up there, um, I thought it'd be good for us to maybe just have a moment of silence. But um, definitely going to miss Kenny. And, uh, you know, it's um, a lot of loss this last year, but uh, that one did hurt for sure. Thank you. Uh, 
Jeremiah. And so, yeah. Yeah, I, I grew up, so I used to take them to, I used to pick them up on the bus, take them to high school. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's your area, huh? Yeah, I was, it's where I was born. I was thinking the other day, I was, you know, people aren't born right on the res anymore. They have to go to Brantford or Hamilton or, you know, of course, if they home birth, they can. But uh, so, yeah, I, that's my home territory for sure. And thank you for uh, for uh, taking that time for Ken. He was uh, quite a character and um, yeah, did oh, yeah. a lot of uh, good things in his time. And oh, yeah. And uh, so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I wanted to talk to you because I'm doing this piece on uh, Better Call Saul. I, you know, I mostly I do old movies and stuff and go to places where they shot and it's called Location, Location. But uh, yeah, I, I know you've played uh, Victor for, well, I guess over two series. Eh? Did you play the same character in uh, Breaking Bad? Yeah, yeah, not to spoil the, the first uh, Breaking Bad, the first series, but um, I, my character, uh, let's say, didn't, didn't make it all the way to the end. Um, hopefully that doesn't spoil it for those who just started watching it. But yeah, and then Better Call Saul, the prequel uh, allowed my character a second life. So um, it, it's the, you know, the, the life before uh, Breaking Bad. So it's leading up into that this last season or sixth season. And uh, yeah, crazy to think, Gary, it's been 10 years, you know, now working uh, with this family and it's just, it's been amazing. I don't know if we could go any further back. You know, they keep talking about other prequels, but um, you know, we'll see. I just have to start trying to get younger, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> So how did you get this uh, job in the first place? Oh, man. I mean, you know how it is, Gary. It's, uh, uh, you, you, get, you, you got uh, a few fights, a few dogs in the fight one day, and, you know, it seems like you're going to take over the world the next day, and then, you know, you don't get anything, and then, you know, you uh, get on a good run, and, and then, uh, then you don't get anything for a few months or a year or whatever, and yeah, it was just kind of the same thing. I was um, I was working here in, in New Mexico local, uh, well, still living in LA. And um, I got a call from my agent and my agent said, hey, you know, a small role, a uh, few lines, um, you know, and it was actually for another character on the show. And um, I, I went in there, you know, did, did my stuff like we, we all do. And you just you know when you have a director that kind of you get that feeling like maybe they you're not the guy you know where the director kind of looks and maybe even if you're saying good stuff they'll kind of just zone out a little bit and so I knew maybe that might not be the best role and uh, nonetheless gave gave the best performance I could and later they ended up casting a um, a great female actress local for that role and um and uh, um, Ashley, I'm trying to remember her last name, but she's from here in New Mexico. And and they ended up coming out, Sherry Rhodes, uh, rest in peace, one of our, our talented uh, casting directors here from New Mexico. She uh, actually ran out to the parking lot. I, I guess this is a thing that she sometimes do, would do back then and stop the car and said, hey, you got to come back in, you know, uh, I, Growing up the way I did, I thought I stole something. You know, I was I just thought I'd, I'd take the the pin from the casting office or something. And yeah, she came out like, "You gotta come back in." There's this role. I think it's a good fit. The director wants to see you immediately if you have a little more time. So I read for it. Um, it was just nondescript customers is what it was. And you know, I, I never really saw that that character had legs. You know, sometimes that just shows with us actors. We you know, think something is going to be the biggest thing ever. And, and then the other ones, we think, you know, it's just kind of a day player. You're in, you're out kind of role. And um, had a chance to work with John Carlo on that first episode, work with Brian. And um, yeah, it was, it was great, you know, um, walked out and never thought anything of it. And then they ended up bringing me back season four, uh, played all the way through it and up until season three until four. So yeah, that's how I got to start on that one. 
Yeah, tell, tell us a bit about, uh, for people who don't know the show, uh, a bit about the character and how he fits into the storyline. Okay. Yeah, the, um, I honestly, I think they were, at the end of that season, what I hear just from people on the production, the writers, the producers, and then um, in other interviews, what I've heard was that they didn't, they didn't know really where they were going to go with the Gus Fring character, which is played by Giancarlo Esposito. Um, you know, definitely I'd consider him a legend, just like yourself, Gary. Um, one of the actors I, I, I keep in, in very high, high regards. And so to work with him, knowing his work all the way back to do the right thing, uh, I guess they just really loved what he was providing and bringing. And, you know, they created this whole uh him as kind of an underworld underworld character but a guy that's right hiding in plain sight so a wolf in sheep's clothing and he has his one side which he runs the squeaky clean legitimate business which does really great in the community los pueblos hermanos is the name it's a uh, a rest uh, fast food restaurant and his other side he has um kind of you know he's in a, a bit of a bad business, which, you know, of course is uh, drugs, primarily meth. And um, my character coming into it is, is one of his, his, uh, his right-hand guys, you know, a guy that does his dirty work. So um, in, in the scene that I first came on to, uh, it's me interacting with uh, Walter White, which is the lead um for those that you don't know the premise it's a it's chemistry teacher turned into a drug dealer and eventually drug overlord and um this teacher ends up being able to make the best meth uh ever uh, a blue crystal meth and he's trying to get in with gus fring and that's how it all starts and my character interfaces with him and just tells him hey you know you gotta back off but if you want to do this this deal has to happen fast. So, you know, Victor's kind of a, a, a character utility character that you don't really, you don't see him, you don't see him coming until he's, he's right there in front of you. And it's either a good thing or it's a bad thing, but it's definitely the type of character that you have to, you, he commands an immediate response. Um, when I re went in for that second audition, which I guess, the first being the other character, um, you know, it was a lot of different um, types and shapes and people, the big guys, and you know, everyone kind of looked a little, a little tough. And you know, we have a few UFC guys here in the community, really great, and they've become actors. And I seen a few of those guys in there, and I was like, oh man, <laughs> you know, automatically, it's never good to look at other people in the uh, in the audition room just because you can can kind of throw yourself off um but there were some big guys in there and i i don't know i think i i grew up with some guys like this and when i got in there and when i first did my my first read i just remember taking everything off of it and just saying the words and just you know almost saying it with no heartbeat and i think really that's kind of what speaks to victor is just a character that is um he thrives on on some of this the, the work that he has to do and, and that he's built for. Um, but at the same time, he has this complex where he feels like he wants to be promoted and that he should almost be right up there making decisions along with Gus Fring, which, um, you know, eventually uh, you'll, you'll see maybe not the best, not the best decision. So <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit about Victor. So what, what has this, uh, you know, when it started a quite small part, but in the end, what, what has it done for your career like as an actor in New Mexico? Yeah, I mean, it's it, quite a quite a bit, you know, Gary, it's, um, uh, I mean, for one, I'm, like I said, I'm being interviewed by Gary Farmer, which is, it, it feels like when you asked me it, it's I almost felt like it should be the other way around. Um, and, you know, as you know, when I'm around you, I just like, uh, a curious kid I'm always trying to suck as much um, information and creativity and understanding other people's process so 
I just want to mention that this is definitely a mile marker for me as well. Um, but, you know, getting here, it, it was just um, taking a lot of auditions, just, I guess, getting kind of fearless and then realizing, you know, I, I don't want the part necessarily. I want to leave like with the best performance that I could leave in the room. And that's kind of, that shifted my whole mindset, I think is rather than thinking I really need this job or I really want this job, just thinking, Hey, I want to create the best that I possibly can. And hopefully if I'm not the right size, color, shape, whatever a race, in this case, there was, it was nondescript. So there wasn't a race to it. I just thought I'm going to make it the hardest possible thing for anyone to turn away from and say, you know, Hey, um, you know, let's go with this kid, you know? And, and so I, I feel like, you know, it, it's done a tremendous amount um, from that point is just the, just reaffirming that, Hey, this is something that I took at a moment's notice, something that I really fell into. And I, I know this world to a certain extent. And I, 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 I really started to like this character and just kind of have fun with it. And, you know, 10 years later, 12 years later, we're still playing. And that's, that's really satisfying. It's something I've, I've, I've never seen or been a part of, but it's, it's opened some unique doors. Um, you know, right now, I'm the reoccurring, recurring on a show um, called Bosch and um, Shaz Bennett, producer, uh, big shout out. She's actually Native American as well, um, working out of LA. And, you know, when I think one of the biggest compliments, she came up right after my first episode and said, Hey, so glad you're able to take the role. I actually wrote this role thinking of you and didn't, you know, never thought maybe that you just thought, you know, maybe timing wise, hopefully hoping that it'd work out. And she's like, but we're big fans of the show. And she says, uh, she's with another producer. And again, whenever I see two producers and they come to talk to me, I almost feel like that, like my, uh, second life I feel like I'm in trouble or something and then like I'm going to go to the principal's office but you know this is quite different and they were saying hey we want to take a photo with you and I was just like oh okay and and so that feels a bit different you know and and um and to be in a show that I guess people within our industry are fans of it is quite an amazing thing you know um Samuel L. Jackson um uh, Anthony Hopkins, if you know, stated their their love for 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 some of that work, and so yeah, it, it's been able to open doors that I think, as a native actor, I I was or as an actor, I consider myself an actor, and I consider myself Native American, but I I never I think pigeonhole myself to just being, you know, a native actor, meaning I could only play native roles. I I've always kind of wanted to to get out and just play, you know, and. Um, and I, I was in the beginning, I think I was so pigeonholed to like, hey, grow your hair out to play these roles. You need to play, you know, you need to look more Indian. And I just thought that doesn't feel real. Like all the Indians I know that, you know, not every Indian has long hair. And, you know, what does it mean to be look like a real Indian? I mean, um, and so it, it feels good, I guess, in a sense to be uh, in this place and being able to be offered, you know, a guy like, like I said, in Bosch, who is just uh, an, an LAPD uh, police officer, um, Billy Harjo, which, you know, happens to be native. Um, and it's not a big part of the plot, him being native, or, you know, they're not going out of their way. So I think those are the things more than anything, you know, being able to go into a casting office, um, one of our great casting directors here, one time I walk in to play a, a sheriff role that was guest star and I see all these 50, 60 year old white guys. And I, I thought I was in the wrong room and I get in there and I almost start crying when she tells me the director looks at me like, I, like, what is this guy doing here? And she says, I, I just wanted to bring him in. He's a great actor. And that's probably, you know, one of the things that I, I'd always hope for is to be just looked at as an actor and less of, you know, like he, uh, we need him because he's a native guy or he fits the, he fits our minority bill and more so uh, based on talent. So 
that that's a huge driving factor. You know, I, I always want to try to push and, and, and open those doors, you know, for all of us, you know, I think as we all do. Yeah, for sure. Let's see. Um, I mean, you, you obviously work with a certain segment of the cast in the show. You don't get to work with the driving force of the cast of uh, uh, Better Call Saul. Uh, but what's the general ensemble? Uh, do you get to hang with all of them or do you have you had scenes with them uh, over the course of the 10 years? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, uh, so for Saul, yeah, most of my work was of course with, with, uh, Giancarlo, um, which went from guest starring to a regular and then, um, his, I guess some of the other characters, uh, Jonathan Banks worked with a lot, Brian Cranston, uh, you know, quite a bit in that, that as well with, uh, um, also with Aaron Paul and, you know, back then, you know, it, it's just, I think we were just all having fun. And there were so many times where, you know, both Aaron Paul and I were just, you know, young guys, we didn't, weren't married yet. And it was like, Hey, you want to go have a, a drink and a cigar afterwards? Like, yeah, sure. And we'll go, you know, and um, it, it was like a family, you know, we just kind of, everyone kind of molded together and there, there wasn't this feeling of hierarchy. And I think them setting that culture was really great because it's, it's not like there was, hey, you have to, you know, don't talk to them or don't look at these guys unless if they look at you. Um, and it's kind of passed over to Saul as well. And, you know, have had uh, this cast, they're, they're great with Saul, like uh, Tony Dalton and, and, um, and uh, um, Michael Mando, you know, will go golf cart racing or just out for, for lunch, you know? And, um, you know, last year got to know um, um, uh, got to know some of the other crew or cast a little more, and um, yeah, it's been great. And Bob, you know, we went and did yoga last year on a rooftop. So I, I think it's just you know, like it's just kind of like camp, you know. I mean, when you get on a, a good crew, it, it feels like you're in summer camp, and that's that's one of the the things that's always attracted me to what we do. Uh, what do you see the uh, impact of these two particular series? They're, they're both the same story, uh, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. What has it done for the New Mexican film community? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think I think it's, at least on the peripheral, um, I think that it's it's provided a lot of growth and sustainability. So just to give an idea, uh, one of our folks that works in props, uh, really smart gal, uh, she um, kind of worked her way up the ladder and, and was recognized just be, for being somebody that's on fire, on fire. And her name is Trina Siopi. And she um, actually kind of graduated into being a producer and, and starting in props. So that kind of tells you just within the own, the, the internal culture, you know, there's nothing that is too big. You know, you could kind of see people progressing and, um, you know, just like me, a, a guy that was a day player, I, I'd never walked on that set thinking that one day I'd be uh, guest starring in, in, um, on the show. So I think that's one, you know, I think that they, they push a lot of loyalty in terms of, you know, vendors and folks that they they've worked with and they, you know, bring them back. And, and so a lot of the crew that we had in the beginning, we, we still have. And if we don't, it's because they're working on other shows, which kind of on its own, I guess we can't claim that. Um, but being able to keep that loyalty, you know, it's never a show that's going to go and uh, jump out and say, well, the incentives are better in Canada so we're going to now shoot better better call Saul in Canada you know so that they there's a loyalty there and I think a lot of the producers and cast have really kind of set either a second home or set anchors here um so I, I think that that really share that shows a lot and that does a lot for the community because uh you know when people are planting roots here and ha having a base here 
even if it's their second base, I, I think it, it, it really shows to the, the longevity for what, uh, what I hope that this industry accomplishes here in, in New Mexico. Um, and, you know, it allows something like me, like a guy that actually uh, grew up partially in New Mexico, you know, allowing to be an actor based out of New Mexico and not having to uh, just, you know, live in L.A. Um, yeah, I just wanted to finally ask you what uh, some of, uh, you know, all these um, good years of employment for you, uh, where has it led you personally in terms of uh, your own uh, work uh, with some of the work uh, you're doing on, on, you, on, you know, that you've developed? Oh, good question. Well, yeah, I guess on a personal basis, um, you know, there's, uh, I have a construction company and I, that's a thing that I do professionally outside of this. And even as a, uh, a small business owner, it, you know, um, it's pretty expensive to have healthcare. So, you know, the healthcare that we have through uh, SAG is definitely a blessing you know, and, and to be able to uh, qualify for those, those pension programs as well. Um, now that I'm married and I have a kid, I think those are, those are things that as a younger person, you know, I look back 10 years ago, I wasn't thinking about those things, you know, and, and those things kind of just fell into place. Um, so really on a, on a per personal level, you know, that I, I give credit or credit's due on that side, as far as, you know, just being able to, to have great access to that and, um, and, uh, and those important uh, seeds being planted, you know, for the future and throughout. And, you know, really on, on the professional side, I think, you know, it, 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 uh, it's allowed me more to think these last few years, well, you know, hey, I, I actually wanted to be a director uh, Gary, I don't, I don't know if I ever told you this, but I've always wanted to, to direct. And that was actually what I moved to LA for um, 20 years ago and started going to school for and didn't get into the LCA, UCLA film school and just realized, you know, uh, that maybe there was a different route, you know, maybe uh, God, the creator had just something else in mind and it's been a different path. So, you know, I think I'd like to get into writing, directing, producing, um, as we go on a little further and, you know, that's, that's kind of a professional goal for myself. And, and I don't know if the last few years didn't go so well, who knows it, it may, I may not be thinking like that, but to have those thoughts, it, it gives me a great hope. And, you know, hopefully uh, we get to work together and, um, you know, like I said, you're always someone that I, I'd, I'd really, uh, looked up to. I think in the beginning, there was hardly anyone that as, a actors that were native we couldn't really we we couldn't peg many and you were definitely one and you pioneer for for uh, for our people so thank you for that thank you yeah it's been a good a good round um yeah jeremiah we should hang out sometime do you live in albuquerque or do you live in Al you go back and forth or i'm here yeah i'm in albuquerque um yeah we're we uh my wife and my daughter, we live, uh, we've been here the last three years and kind of uh, planting some roots. Yeah. And uh, my wife has a, um, a nonprofit, if you don't mind, I'm going to shamelessly give it a little plug. Uh, and uh, her foundation actually has done a lot of work for our people during the pandemic. So she's delivered uh, around $75,000 of food over the pandemic, 25,000 pounds, I believe, of fresh produce, um, PPE supplies. Um, almost every weekend during the pandemic, she was down on the res down, out at Navajo Eastern Agency, um, giving things out and making sure people had, um, you know, had, had adequate supplies and, and, uh, and food. So um, um, our hopes in that is, you know, we next we want to start a uh, little coffee shop or coffee truck and with the proceeds that we make, you know, give that back to the community even more and be able to provide, you know, in times like this. So that's something that we're definitely passionate about as well. 
Excellent. That's great. Yeah. Um, I have something else that raised the question. Oh, um, you know, my little piece is always about particular locations. Um, in terms of just better call Saul, uh, which some of the more popular spots in Albuquerque that uh, the the, the storyline finds itself? Is there any particular location that's uh, memorable for you? Yeah, I mean, I think the epicenter is really um, the rail rail yards. It it seems like we're always shooting and filming either on the rail yards or around the rail yards um or even some of the sub yards the smaller the smaller yards um so you'll see that a lot in our show you know and and um you'll see our characters meeting in some of these uh dark danky mysterious looking locations and they're actually some of the older rail yards so you know that's definitely one one for us i think that's probably the most iconic you know that i could think of and it it's cool to be in there um because you know you just feel the history and you just think what it was back at that time and you know you look at some of these old photos of albuquerque which i think location wise i feel like saul really kind of dips into um different eras like you know, you, you can watch the show sometimes and almost get a feeling like, you know, maybe you're not necessarily able to spot the, the time period or the era. And some of the the, the dated buildings and, and some of the, um, uh, the beautiful, uh, you know, architecture that, that they're able to find here and highlight here, you know, it really kind of gives it an eclectic sense of, of like, you know, where is this place? That's, I think one thing I always get is for people from out of town saying, you know, are those, you know, is that all set or are all, the, are all those buildings and all of that, is that, is that really what it's like? And, and I think that's what our location department and our production has been able to really do great at is finding some of those gems, you know, but I, I'd say the rail yards is probably, that's, that's a great one. Where is that near the main train station? Yeah, so main train station, um, just south, if you ever have a chance. Um, Saturdays, they used to do um, like a, a little farmer's market. And you could go down there and take the train and just kind of uh, check things out, you know, buy some produce and uh, local vendors there they're selling everything from crafts to food to all different types of things so they have some open they did have um open events you know and things were a little bit more open but yeah whenever you want come down and we can go check it out okay all right thank you so much i think that's i got everything i need for the thing um you you had you speak so eloquently um I think I'll, I'll plug a few pieces into this because I, I pull quotes from the show and use the music and, you know, and some of the, you know, the politicians have a lot to pat themselves on the back over the success yeah. of it. So I'll use some of that and I'll, you know, pull it all in. But I'll, uh, I'm going to show this to uh, my co-hosts and uh, maybe we'll have you on as a guest as um, the next great thing that happens for you. and. Uh, you can speak to a lot of the same issues we talked about because I'll, I'll just be pulling clips and stuff, you know. Okay. But uh, maybe we can get you on as a regular guest. That'd be great. Yeah, I'd love that. And I'll I'll send you whatever you guys if you want. Um, you know, any anything from my reel or anything that that might be helpful on that side. Um, I can send that through as well. That that'd but. be great. Or even some. Uh, stills of the rail yard that that would help me a lot too oh yeah anything like that that you have would be very very valuable yeah i'll email you some stuff cool yeah. i'll give my best to your wife what's her name i forget i know I've ali met. ali yeah ali yeah, met, she came to events sometimes didn't she? she she came to one one event one of the dream catchers when we went um, to the islands right in, out in uh up in um yeah up in in your 
your your stomping grounds. Oh, absolutely. yeah, contest there, yeah, yeah, uh, awards. Yes, yeah, she, she came up once, but uh, our baby girl was still very small, and uh, Olivia is her name, and she's three now. And so back then, I think she was maybe two, and just wasn't. You know, she was tired from the trip, so they stayed in the room, and I came down and and hung out with everybody. Right. But, uh, yeah. But beautiful up there, man. You come from a beautiful area. Yeah, it's, well, good farming, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you know anything about, because, you know, I think I heard about it first through my family. You know, my sister used to go with Ken. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I heard. So I I got early through that part of the family, and and then I'm the one that told Stevie, and then uh, well, I asked him to check, and he did. And but I, I never did hear how Ken passed uh, or anything. I guess I just assumed it was like a a heart attack or something. Or yeah, you know, I think it was just in his sleep. Um, you know, he had uh, uh, from my understanding, he he went to bed one night, and you know, the next next day, he didn't he didn't wake up. So, uh, That's from nice. whatever, oh, yeah, you. yeah. So, I mean, I, 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 from what I hear, it wasn't anything, uh, really, uh, um, traumatic or anything, you know, of course the, what occurred is traumatic, but yeah, it wasn't anything really harsh. I guess it was just in his sleep. Wow. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's uh, shaking now, but I don't know if we'll be carrying on events or not but we'll have to wait and see i guess yeah yeah i mean i know brian and those i was just you know i was on the phone with with uh with jb with joseph brant a little earlier and he's yeah it sounds like they're running they're running with it you know which is kind of which is great to see you know I, I keep up with um um jerry's son a little bit and they're running uh kind of a similar you know they're, they're created almost like a gre but in the medical marijuana space right and they're doing really well with that so and i don't know involved with that too right uh, yeah yeah so it's kind of cool to see like this next generation getting into uh the business and you know running with the reins yeah i'll be looking forward to when we all can get together and celebrate again yeah me too yeah be fun. me too you know, we're I building at it like uh, Ocean's Eleven or something. You remember? <laughs> we're more like Ocean's Thirty Five or something. But... Yeah, I think so too. It's like we all uh, we all get together and the adventure starts. Yeah, you know. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah Gary had amazing I... stories after too. Like I guess they bought. I don't know if you remember that time in Bahamas when Michelle uh, Thrush sang. Uh, Kenny, would you buy me a Mercedes Benz? That old. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Those, those guys <laughs> actually bought her a Mercedes and shipped it out to her. Did you know that? Oh, just because of that? Yeah, because they sang that song. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious! I believe it. Yeah, yeah those. There's no uh, no holding back. I mean, some of the some of the times with Kenny and Jerry, I'd just be. I remember.